Hey friends, it's me, Lee Alexander, and it gives me so much pleasure to welcome you back to Lo-Fi Let's Play. Thanks to the help of our kind and generous backers on Patreon. Uh, we really appreciate your support and uh, allowing us to return to the gentle world, uh, <laughs> she says as brick and barbed wire come rushing up onto the screen, of vintage text adventures. I thought we could uh, kind of ring the series back in with one of my favorite games um, as a child, uh, improbably perhaps, Escape from Rungastan, 1982. So I was maybe six or seven, um, although this game... I was born in 81, so this game had already been... This game was old when I was born. Um, let's, let's have some instructions. Escape from Rungastan. Uh, you are about to cross the border into the country of Rungastan in Central Africa. I'm not sure if that's a real country. Um, they don't like foreigners, especially those that play with computers. If you cross the border, they will probably throw you in jail and sh shoot you at sunrise. Wow. Bleak, friends, isn't it? Your only hope in that case to be is to escape from the cell and make it back across the border. It's a long and tough journey. Make sure you look at things closely, uh, for there are many dangers to avoid and skills to acquire. So uh, we'll skip some of the rest as it's pretty standard text parser instructions, north, south, east, west, look, take, things like that. Um, when you're reasonably sure you want to kick the computer, try hint please sometimes the machine will have mercy and help you a little that's nice isn't it um as in real life there will be times when you have to react swiftly at various points in your journey you will have to respond while objects are moving if you remain calm you'll do just fine so this brings me to one of the reasons that i think that escape from rungistan is so special as an art artifact um as you'll see in a minute uh because the first scene has a swift reaction uh, do not, do not, do not pull the plug, turn off the machine, hit reset or interrupt power in any way while the disc is spinning, unless you wish to destroy this disc. Well, luckily, thanks to the magic of emulation uh, and the, the people who work tirely to make vintage software available, tirely tirelessly to make vintage software available. Uh, we don't have to worry about destroying this disc. We're using uh, Enhanced Apple II emulator for Windows. Uh, so we're going to continue. Um, I'm going to start a new game. And uh, this game uh, was so beloved to me as a child because of how forbidding and anxious making it was. It was a puzzle for adults, I felt. Um, you see, we begin in a jail cell. Um, this is uh, the four color palette typical of the time. Um, you could call it black and white, but what it really is is violet, white, black, and green. Uh, so we're in a jail cell. Uh, we can see we have a bed. Look at the bed. Uh, we can see we have some books, maybe. The one on the right or the one on the left. Oh, let me call your attention to this little mouse-shaped creature moving uh, through the room very quickly. Um, this is, friends, the first adv adventure game ever, first text adventure ever to my knowledge, to involve time as a mechanic. Uh, this game contains a lot of animated action sequences that re require you to uh, input a command within a limited amount of time, and there are certain areas that you can't stay in too long. Let's read the book on the left, how about? It is a book on navigation of Rungistan waterways. You become an expert. Wow. Books are good for that, aren't they? Let's read the book on the right. I don't understand. Read book, the one on the right. Here we go. And now, Fly by Night. It's a book on aviation. Now you know how to fly. Your license is in the mail. Who knew? We've become a waterways expert and a pilot the whole time we've, we've been in jail here in the land of Rungistan. Oh, here's the mouse again. Uh, look, mouse. He's a cute little bugger. Take mouse. Uh, you can't. He's too fast. Luckily for me, I can type about 120 words a minute on my best day, but as a child, I found that a very high-pressure speed trap. Do you think you might be uh, challenged by it, too? Let's try to move the bed. Too weak to move it, huh? Uh, so I'm just going to introduce you a little bit to the, Rungus the Escape from Rungistan hint system. You have to type hint, please. Um, it doesn't like if you just ask for a hint. Try calling the guard. Okay, so we're too weak to move the bed. We have the option of calling the guard. And again, um, sometimes it seems like these text games are uh, primitive or that they're not very smart, but you actually just have to put things in the right way. And uh, learning the commands and what types of words are viable inputs, I think, is as valuable a skill in game playing as having quick reflexes. So the guard hears you and asks what you want. How about some food? 
The guard brings your last meal and slides the tray into your cell. What have we got here, friends? A thick steak, a piece of cheese, and a candy bar. Uh, so you might want to eat everything that you see before you, but uh, these games can have permanent object loss, which means if you were, for example, to eat the cheese or the candy bar and end up needing it later, um, spoiler alert, we need them. So let's try eating the steak. Uh, that was good. Do you feel much, much stronger now? Wonder what the cheese is for, friends. We'll take the cheese and take the candy. So um, a lot of times when I do research for lo-fi let's play, I'll just move the bed to the window. Uh, it's a combination of my prior acquaintance um, with things and uh, some research that I do uh, with games that are new to me. I may play them a few times uh, before trying to show them to you. Uh, oh, here's a small boy here. What's his deal? What's your deal, boy? The boy is playing hooky from school so he can watch your execution. Cheers, man. All right. Um, let's give him the candy. I hear that boys love candy. Uh, the boy loves the candy and throws you a small shovel in return. Wow, good throw, getting it through the bars and everything, and then he leaves. Uh, but with this game, uh, I'm afraid, as I was saying, uh, rather than trying to feel my way around, I kind of, I'm familiar with the vocabulary of this game the way that I am with my own heartbeat. Um, it's funny uh, to have occasionally been revi revisiting the uh, same piece of primitive software um, every so often for years. Um, so we've we've exited the jail cell. Congratulations, everybody. We're free. Um, and it says, but don't go north. Um, so just to give you an idea of the kind of sense of humor that this game has, uh, let's try going north. See what happens. You have wandered in front of the firing squad. The guard thanks you for saving him the trouble. They shoot you, and you are dead. Do you want to try again? Of course I do. So luckily we can restore the game right to the earlier point. And um, here we are, newly liberated. So we're going to do some exploring just to kind of figure out what the bounds of this area are. What happens if we go south? We already know that we can't go north. You start to make a kind of mental map. Oh, you're in the prison recreation area, which is a joke because this is actually the uh, hangman's noose. Uh, we see some stairs, so you know we can probably reasonably press up. Don't worry, I'm a professional. I know I wouldn't ordinarily recommend you climb the hangman's noose in, in a hostile foreign territory, but um, I think we could use this rope, so I'm going to go ahead and take that. See what else is going on around here. Can we go south again? Can't. What about east? So now we kind of have a mental map. Oh, friends, there is a snake here. Uh, if you see this sort of primitive line being rendered on repeat as it crosses the screen uh, and you see that I'm holding very still and I'm not touching the keys. Um, that is another example of Mr. Bob Blouschild's time-oriented mechanics. Um, if you were to kind of type or try to input any commands uh, before the snake left, the snake would uh, have a headache and uh, bite you. So we're exploring the desert. There's a deep gorge to the east. Wow, what, what's to the north? Can't go that way. Okay, and we're back here. So we, we see that um, the only things to, that to really do out here in the desert are to avoid snakes and to um, figure this gorge out. Let's approach the gorge, standing at the edge. It appears to be bottomless. Wow, that's good to know. He better not fall in the gorge. If we type into the hint uh, system, it says we need to run and then jump. So uh, anytime this game asks you to take any reckless actions, it's good to save. Um, I like the environment of anxiety that's created by knowing that uh, one wrong move. So let's do, let's, let me show you something. We run. Your first five steps take you five feet over the edge. Happy landings. Ah, see, we were much too close to the gorge to get a running start. Even uh, even though the hint advised us to run, it was a little bit misleading. Um, this is a relic of an age where um, consumer value, you know, we hear a lot today among fans of video games about how many hours something is and whether they're getting a value for their dollar. Uh, as if, oh, here comes the snake again, let's hold still. As if experience could be measured um, quite in that fashion, but uh, things were not much different in the early 80s, and uh, creators of adventure software were asked to make them as tricky as possible, um, to make them as unforgiving as possible. Um, 
and to uh, try to frustrate the player so that it would take them as many tries as possible to solve the inner workings uh, of the game. So let's try, now that we've got some distance on the gorge, we're going to run and uh, take a look at this, friends, if you're not looking at your computer at the minute. We're running towards the gorge, and I have to type in the word jump at exactly the right minute. Oop, successfully lumped, jumped the gorge, lost the shovel. We're at the east edge of the gorge. There is a snake here. A lot of snakes today. I wonder if uh, holding still works in real life as a, as a solution to encountering snakes. Um, let's save the game, because I don't want to have to jump that gorge again, do you? So uh, we're going to wander... Can't jump back again. I'm gonna wander around, see what's going on here. It is funny the degree to which um, puzzles in computer games often gave me ideas about the real world. Um, I would often research real world issues in the hopes that it might give me ideas about how to better solve adventure game puzzles. Um, today, I suppose you could just Google. Um, but even if you could Google today, best way of dealing with snakes, I don't know if any of the advice would say hold still. So we found a knife in the desert, uh, if you haven't, if you've only been listening in a tab or something, and the mountains are in the distance. So I'm going to attempt to approach the mountains. And uh, even despite these incredibly crude graphics that we're facing, don't you have a sense of having traveled, friends? We've left the prison, we've crossed a gorge, a path along the river leads into the mountains. We could follow the path. Yeah, where path climbs along the cliffs. Interesting. And uh, even though we don't really have any descriptive text at the site of this mountainside pass, um, you can generally, in most adventure games, graphically rely on uh, left being west and east, be, uh, right being east and uh, north being forward on the screen. Um, but before we step into strange holes, I'm going to uh, save the game. Save early, save often, everybody. Uh, let's enter this cave. Oh my goodness, you awaken a cute, cuddly bear, where if you would like to study the line art, you can notice it's not particularly cute or cuddly at all. It seems to have two fangs. Didn't know bears had fangs. Um, let's try to... I'm going to throw this knife with caution, because, um, you know, I'm not sure if it'll work. I can't remember. <laughs> you throw the knife and kill the bear. Well, I didn't really know that that would work either, but uh, let's read the wall. Ski instructions. So we're in the mountains. We've received some ski instructions. Uh, and judging by the real-time action features of Escape from Rungistan, we may need to uh, be ready to use the arrows in sort of a very quick and a, uh, a very reputable way. Uh, so let's make a mental note of these things. Write them in your adventure notebook if you have one. I like to keep an adventure notebook because... Uh, Every detail counts when you're exploring these harsh and forbidding environments. I don't know what about the fear and the anxiety of this game made me love it so much. I mean, ordinarily, anxiety is something that we play games to avoid. And, and by the way, it's kind of that time of year, so I hope everyone who experiences anxiety is, is, is doing as well as they can. Um, and I recommend playing soothing old games as a means of, of feeling a little calmer. So, uh... Speaking of anxiety, there's a rickety-looking bridge. Uh, you see nothing unusual. Uh, let's see, if we go north... We are at the bridge. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to save the game because even just this very basic line drawing has given me as the player um, information enough that I should probably be prepared to use my reflexes. Don't you think so, friends? Um, let's give the bridge a go. Uh, the mountain blocks that way. Um, should go east this way. Yeah, that's the way onto the bridge. Oh, and no sooner do we step on than we have this very sophisticated animation of a strong wind causing the bridge to become unstable, and we get the text prompt back with just enough time to attempt to jump. Which way? North? No. <laughs> you rode the bridge into the river. The bridge survived. You didn't. Do you want to try again? So, let's restore the game. Oh, we can't do that while the mouse is, is present in the jail cell. There he goes. He is a cute little bugger. Well done, Mr. Bluff's child. Um, restore game. So now we're standing at the bridge. And um, one thing that I recommend doing when uh, the expected solution to a puzzle doesn't work is um, check what items you may be carrying. We have a piece of cheese and some rope. Oh, no. Did we not get the mouse? 
I forgot to take the mouse friends and now we can't go back. Goodness, might have to start over. Restart the game. Well, we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Why do we say we keep going? Um, I was so excited speaking to you that uh, I forgot to wait for the mouse to cross through the room again so he could accept the cheese before we left. Um, we are carrying a rope, though, and that might be a useful thing in a br bridge collapse. We successfully throw the rope across and are back on the west side cliff, which is uh, great news for us, isn't it? Um, please wait for part two as we walk across the rope. It's exciting. Um, you're on the east side of the gorge, uh, and there's probably no going back. Um, let's see what other directions are available to us. Yeah, sometimes you can just get yourself stuck um, if you've forgotten to do something. You're in the mountains. You see nothing unusual about the trees or the mountains. Oh goodness, we're in a snowstorm. We had better get out of it. Um, <laughs> you can actually perish from thermal exposure uh, in this game if you don't find a way to shelter soon. Uh, the door to the ski cabin is permanently locked. Um, so that kind of tells us that the emph emphasis on the world word permanently, that we won't, won't be getting in via a key. And if we ask for a hint, it says, try violence. So we kick the door. Smash the, the door down. Violence is sometimes the best solution. And um, enter the cabin. And here are the skis. If you can remember just a few minutes ago, we had some ski instructions uh, that let us know we should be prepared for another action timing sequence soon. So now that we're safely inside the cabin, um, I want to think about uh, why it was so interesting for me that action timing was involved in the text adventure game. I was never very good at arcades. And um, again, the constant threat of permadeath in these games is, is kind of severe enough without uh, having to worry about your reflexes as well. And again, I was only maybe six or seven when I first encountered this. Um, but in my mind, the landscape of this world was so rich. I thought that this was a real place. I had uh, some really uh, cartoon, borderline offensively cartoonish box art. Well, I guess it is offensive. There's a sort of parody native character who's a cannibal that appears later. Um, but that was all I had to go on to kind of uh, put on our skis. Where are the skis? I don't understand. All right. Yeah, um, to go on. And uh, again, I remember interviewing my uncle about skiing in the hopes that it would somehow make me better at these um, scenes. And uh, I, I really loved that violence was the answer when it came to the ski cabin as well. Um, in the early 80s, it was, uh, you know, not only did we have games whose value proposition was in how long could you frustrate the player for, but um, uh, I'll get back to that in a second, folks. Let's try skiing. I'll resume. So as you can see, We've got a very difficult live action sequence here. I still find this quite quite tough to do. You deliver a sharp blow to the tree and get a severe outbreak of splinters in the face. You're dead. Um, yeah, I'd like to try again. Um, let's start after the gorge in the hopes that it gives us a file that contains everything we need up to this point. Yeah, no, that, uh, that cheat didn't work. Sometimes it uh, will sort of create an autosave point that you can always go back to regardless of your own poor performance. Um, but yeah, so not only was it the fashion to frustrate the player repeatedly, it was also um, the fashion to punish the player for becoming frustrated, to laugh at you as a player if you should type in any curses or be otherwise impolite. Roberta Williams was notorious for this, um, taking away the player's life if the player cursed or, or did any other beca behavior that was indicative of unseemly frustration. Oh, we hit a tree after several attempts to pass it. Um, yeah, let's give it a try. Um, one more time. What do you think, friends? It's funny how this ski sequence... Um, I have passed it before as an adult uh, on an emulator, like years later, uh, and again only recently. But um, it is so funny how you often expect that you're going to improve with age. You're going to become better, stronger, faster, a more intrepid adventurer, and it is quite satisfying to return to a lot of the games that frustrated me as a kid and, you know, be able to find them 
quite simple. You know, it shows that you've grown. But this ski sequence remains in my mind as sort of a, a permanent challenge. I think something that no matter how grown I get is, is always going to be capable of thwarting me. Um, so there's a little bit of exciting bonus info uh, about this. Uh, and that's that a few years ago, I wrote an open letter to Bob Blauschild, the creator of this game, uh, excoriating him a bit for uh, upsetting me so much as a child with his uh, action timing and his uh, notorious ski sequence. Uh, he has the, It's a signature of his. He has done a few adventures for uh, Sirius Software, and uh, always the action timing is, uh, is a feature. And uh, to my surprise, he discovered my open letter and replied to me again some 20 years after I had been a child playing his game for the first time. Gosh, more than 20 years after, which, you know, two decades later to commune with the person who's made me try to do the ski sequence over and over and over again for more than 20 years. Well, let me tell you, that was quite an experience. And um, if you are a backer at the $5 level, I will include my correspondence with Mr. Blouse Child in the newsletter that you get as a backer reward. Um, thank you so, so much uh, for coming back to Lo-Fi Let's Play with me. Um, this series is a source of great joy and inspiration and community for me. And um, I was so relieved to see that um, you guys wanted to have it back and that you were willing to fund it and that it must mean something to you too. Uh, so thanks so much. Um, I hope you're looking forward to future episodes. And uh, again, my YouTube channel is, uh, is slash Lee Alexander one, if I'm not mistaken. Gosh, I should get better at this uh, video promotion thing. Um, and my uh, Patreon page is slash Lee Alexander. My Twitter is at Lee Alexander. Um, please, Share Lo-Fi Let's Play with your friends if you enjoy it. Thank you so much. See you next time.